Welcome to the short lecture series on Silk by Alessandro Barrico. In this lecture, we will be summarizing chapters 26 to 30 and analyzing it also. Summary of chapters 26 to 28. In these three chapters, the story of intrigue between Jean Cor and the Japanese mistress deepens. Ho Jean-Cor lies about his reason for visiting Nimes to his wife. He says it is a business trip and that he would be back the same day. Madame Blanc's place, which was on 12 Rue Moscat, is both a fabric shop and the parlour. The fabric shop is on the ground floor and the parlour is on the top. Now, in the parlour, there were only French girls working. And it was also decorated almost as if there was a party which was continuously ongoing. A pianist was playing tunes in Russian, with Russian flavor. And he ran his hand at the end of each song and murmured, Voila. jean -Cor was made to wait a couple of hours before being introduced to the room of Madame Blanc. Madame Blanc is wearing a white kimono of light material. She also has these intense blue flowers which she wears as rings on her fingers. She has shiny black hair and a clearly oriental face which is beautiful. She assumes that jean -Cor wants to go to bed with her and asks him if he is rich enough to do that. Jean Cor asks for a favor from her, ignoring her question, and shows his willingness to pay whatever her price is. He wants to know what was written on the piece of paper that he had got from Japan. She smiles at his request, and though she didn't have to, she takes the paper and reads it. While she is reading it, her kimono falls open, revealing her chest, and jean notices that it is that of a young girl and is very pale, but strangely, he is not stirred by it. She reads out and translates the message on the paper, which is, Return or I will die. As jean goes to the end of the room and is about to place the money, on the table, she comments that he should forget about it. He thinks it is related to the money, but she says not that, about the woman. And she says practically that a woman will not die even if you don't go. jean Kerr chooses not to respond to her comment and leaves the place after paying her. Baldebu mentions that sometimes men came all the way from Paris to make love to Madame Blanc, and when they left, they always left with these blue flowers on their labels. Moving on to the analysis of these three chapters. jean Cour's visit to Madame Blanc is all about the characters placed in their settings, from the odd piano player to the French girls to Madame Blanc's blue flowers worn as rings and her white kimono to the kind of contrast that jean Cor is. Madame Blanc is clearly an immigrant Japanese woman who knows the intricacies of Japanese culture, which is lost on jean Cor. She also seems to have a hard history in how she has immigrated to, to France and does not want to talk about it. She clearly is a brothel owner and therefore didn't have a you know, uh, didn't have a great past, which also helps her to view sex only as a business and from a very clearly logical and passionless point of view. This makes her the voice of logic in the story. She clearly can manipulate a situation which is visible through how she establishes her authority in the entire situation by making jean Ko wait for two hours before admitting him to her room. When she suggests that he should forget about the Japanese woman, hers is the voice of logic. 
she's practical about the fact that the other woman would not actually die without him because she has survived without him for all these years. She dissuades him from pursuing this matter further also because she's aware of how hard he could be punished in an orthodox society like Japan if he is caught in the act. Jean Cor chooses to ignore her advice and creates an ironic situation because in the previous chapters we are told by the author that Jean Cor is somebody who likes to observe life rather than participate in it. But in choosing to pursue the woman he is passionately involved in the act of living rather than only observing it from a distance. That's where the irony of the situation lies. This particular decision will also bifurcate his life into two worlds, one with his wife Helene and the other one with the Japanese mistress of Harakei. This, but these chapters are resplendent with the symbolism of colors also. The predominant colors in these three chapters is of course intense blue, but there is also mention of white. The kimono which establishes Madame Blanc's nationality is in clear transparent white, symbolizing her no-nonsense attitude towards sex and passion. She does not attempt to cover herself up even when the kimono falls open, revealing the honest approach that she has towards sex and her profession. The intense blue can be symbolized as the cold-blooded attitude with which she provides the service of sex to men who come to her. Generally, passion or anything related to sex and love is symbolized by red, but in Madame Blanc's case, it is symbolized by blue. Her service is impeccable and satisfactory, which is why the men are willing to go away with blue flowers on their labels, thus establishing her stamp on them. Let's move on to chapter analysis of 29 to 30. First, the summary. jean claude takes his wife Helen to Ribera for vacations that summer. They have a pleasant time there and Helen believes she will conceive a male child that summer because of the ambience of that place. jean claude meets a Polish dealer while on this vacation who had been to Japan recently during a concert one evening. That meeting stirs him up. In the night, he wakes up in the middle of of the night and reconfirms his eternal love for his wife. In September, the silkworm breeders meet to decide about the young biologist Louis Pasteur, who has been sent by the government to study the reason for bad yield of silkworms in France and find a solution. Louis Pasteur worked with a microscope and was scientifically advanced and had great results in the field already. There is also the news of imminent civil war in Japan and, French, and the French consulate, which is placed in Japan, issues a notice of no trade with the island till the war is over or the fear of the war is over. The silk businessmen of Level 2 therefore meet up to decide what should be done and their discussions lead to the idea that they should be prudent and not send jean Cor out on a trip this time and just make do with the shipments that will come in from Middle East. But Baldebu, who is the leader for the entire gang, does not want to take that kind of a decision and therefore turns to jean Cor for a comment on this. But jean Cor, who had already read about pasture, is not really interested in the advances that Pasteur has made and also prefers to not comment on it. He would rather spend his time planning his park around the house. He is wealthy, has a peaceful life and 
believes that he's going to become a father. Therefore, he feels complacent about his position and does not care one way or the other. He leaves the decision up to Baldebu about taking the trip to Japan. Now, the analysis of chapter 29 to 30. These two chapters show this world of Herve Jean Cor, which is in France. He feels guilty about his feelings for the Japanese woman and therefore to make up for it, takes his wife on a vacation for the first time. And his thoughts still continue to wander to the Japanese woman. The encounter with the trader stirs up his sleeping desire for that woman and his confession to his wife in, on that night can be constructed in a different way also. It could be a reiteration of his commitments to her for himself or it could be something that he dreamily said to his wife but meant for the mistress. There are clear similarities or parallels between the two women in that moment because his wife is also reclining on the bed like Harake's mistress was reclining on Harake's lap when Jonko sets eye on her. Both Helen and the mistress have long dark hair. When the Japanese woman opened her eyes, she commanded Jonko's attention. Similarly, when his wife opens her eyes, she prompts Jonko to confess his undying love for her. But those words could appear to be directed at either women. Historical facts and fiction co-mingle in these chapters with reference to real places like Rivera and Nice, as well as historical figures such as Louis Pasteur and the civil war that actually took place in Japan. But the visit of Louis Pasteur to Level 2 is fictional as well as the stationing of French consulate in Japan in that period of time is also fictional. The historical realities will affect the lives of the fictional characters of Level 2 throughout the novel. The manufacturers are torn about spending the money to send Jean Cor to Japan. And this is because they also feel that it would be a needless expense if Pasteur manages to find a solution for the ec epidemic plaguing the silkworms in France, then they don't have to buy it from Japan. Moreover, it's a dangerous risk to take to send Jonko to Japan when it is on the cusp of a civil war. Meanwhile, Jonko himself is paralyzed when he has to make a decision between the passive security, prosperity and peace that he enjoys with his wife in France and between between embarking on a dangerous adventure to claim another man's woman in Japan. Which is why he turns to Baldibu, his mentor, for guidance. And this will be the last time he will ask Baldibu for help, even though he maintains a friendship with Baldibu as long as Baldibu is in town. The chapter also finally shows the foregrounding of American civil war coming into reality through the civil war that is going to take place across the sea in Japan. Now the overall analysis clearly shows the themes of history, illicit romance, guilt and the choices in life that people have to make in these chapters. The techniques continue to be foregrounding, symbolism and postmodern techniques like gap filling and others. The next video will analyze chapters 31 to 35.